And the notable thing uh, that you guys highlighted in the intro is the subtext of menace that he is... Uh, Does anyone have a, a, a good highlight, like some of the best moments? Because this is delicious copium. Like, we need to see the MAGA copium on this one. Okay. Does anyone have, like, a good, good highlights of the fucking call? Because I'm not going to listen to 53 minutes of it, but I would listen to the excerpts. Okay, here it is. We'll watch this in a second. Let's uh, finish this one first, though. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Here, let's... Raising against Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, during this call, appealing, uh, setting aside everything else uh, for him to change votes on the grounds that people are angry about the outcome. Take a listen. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated because... Uh, the 2,236 and absentee ballots, I mean, they're, they're all exact numbers that were, were done by accounting firms, law firms, etc. And even if you cut them in half, cut them in half, and cut them in half again, it's more votes than we need. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. Now, obviously, honest elections officials do not alter vote counts because the losers of the election are angry that they lost. And what you heard on that call was Brad Raffensperger trying very calmly to lay out the facts as uh, in, at the end of that one clip saying that the uh, data the president had was incorrect. That the th Listen, make no mistake, okay? An honest secretary of state is oxymoronic. An honest Republican secretary of state is is not a real thing okay like brad is not necessarily an honest broker okay he is not a good person his entire purpose just like brian kemp that came before him who is now the governor if you recall um his entire fucking uh purpose on this planet is to ensure that republicans win that state by literally blocking black people from voting okay that is their goal that is their duty. That is their fucking purpose. So for that person to turn around and be like, oh, dude, come on. Like, come on. You're, you're being crazy. That's how crazy Donald Trump is. Do not believe that like, do not mistake a, a, a moment of sanity from a Republican as like honesty. Okay. Do not think that there are honest people. Excuse me about the rock of the fuck out of man. Not saying quit what you're doing, but just letting you know. Okay, thank you, but I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to the, the whole call. Had were incorrect. Here's Brad Ravensburger. For the last two months, we've been fighting the rumor whack-a-mole, and it was pretty obvious very early on that we debunked every one of those theories that have been out there, but the President Trump continues to believe them. So we've continued to debunk this. We believe that truth matters, which continue to fight to get our message out, but it's fighting the rumor whack-a-mole daily. Now, the problem is that uh, playing whack-a-mole and disproving rumors only uh, is effective if the person that you're talking to is capable of understanding reality, uh, and if they are capable of understanding reality, that they have uh, that they don't have malign intent that they're not simply seeking to do something blatantly improper and it's not obvious that either of those things is true of president trump he does not seem to uh, have a firm grasp on reality and he plainly is trying to uh, alter the uh, result of an election that he lost to joe biden good stuff also, my bagels are here. Let's this watch. This week, we're going to be able to measure exactly. Let's watch uh, the audio of Trump. We have won this election in Georgia based on all of this. And there's, there's nothing wrong with, with saying that. My bagels are here. Hell yeah. You know, I mean, having, the, having a correct. You, the people of Georgia are angry. And these numbers are going to be repeated on Monday night along with others that we're going to have by that time, which are much more substantial even. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong.
Now, do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also that Dominion took out machines. Uh, that Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. This is Ryan Germany. No, Dominion has not um, moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having. Well, but no, but, but have they moved? Uh, have they have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. You sure, Ryan? This is so sad. He's so sad, dude. What a sad boy. Are you sure? Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Just say yes, please. I need you to say, Ryan. Ryan, I need you to say yes to me, Ryan. Guys, I got a bagel broker. One of the best bagel places in LA. This is jalapeno cheese with cucumber. On a jalapeno uh, a bagel and I got a regular bacon egg and cheese mm. it was very good I'm sure you should want to have an accurate election and you're a Republican we believe but we do have an accurate election no I no, you don't no no you don't you don't have you don't have not even close you got, you're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. You know what they did and you're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal, that's a criminal offense. And, and, you know, you can't let that happen. That's, that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. But they are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard. And they are removing machinery uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can both of which are criminal fines and you can't let it happen and you are letting it happen. You know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have because we won the state. He's trying. So, so tell me, He's trying so fucking hard, dude. It's great. This is great. Brad, what are we going to do? Uh, we won the election, and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. And I think you have to say that you're going to reexamine it, and you can reexamine it, but, but reexamine it with people. Folks, at this stage, they have done three recounts. One of them was literally a hand-counted recount. Georgia, unlike other states, literally has a paper printout of every single ballot that was cast. And they had humans count all of it. Like, not just machines. They did two recounts with machines, and then they did one recount with literally hand recounting every single fucking vote. No. It is like, it's impossible at this stage. It's so ridiculous. It, it makes it way more ridiculous than anything else. People that want to find answers, not people that don't want to find answers. Uh... For instance, I'm hearing Ryan, and he's probably, I'm sure, great. Yes, I put ketchup on my bacon, egg, and cheese. I'm from, I'm from uh, Turkey, but I, by way of New Jersey, I came to Los Angeles, but I came to New Jersey before. Of course, you put ketchup and a salt, bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Y'all are fucking. I'm not a big ketchup guy, otherwise, but. It's almost as essential as like fucking ketchup with French fries. Great lawyer and everything, but he's making statements about those ballots that he doesn't know. But he's making them with such he he did make them with surety, but now I think he's less sure because the answer is they all went to Biden, and that alone wins us the election by a lot. You know, so. Mr. President, uh, ketchup or hot sauce. You have people that submit information, and we have our people that submit information, and then it comes before the court, and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. Well, under law, you're not allowed to give faulty election results, okay? You're not allowed to do that, and that's what you've done. This is a faulty election result. And honestly, 
this should go very fast. You should meet tomorrow because you have a big election election coming up. And because of what you've done to the president, you know, the people of, of uh, Georgia know that this was a scam. And because of what you've done to the president, a lot of people aren't going out to vote. And a lot of Republicans are going to vote. I wish that was the case. Negative, because they hate what you did to the president. OK, they hate it. And they're going to vote. And if you would be respected, if really respected, if this thing could be straightened out before the election. You have a big election coming up on Tuesday. The president. Speaking about himself in the, in the third person, that's hilarious. As the president blatantly abuses his power and threatens democracy, keep this quote in mind from an anonymously sourced senior Republican official to the Washington Post. A week after the election, as they sought to explain why it was okay that Republicans weren't admitting Joe Biden won the election. Quote, what is the downside for humoring him for this little bit of time? No one seriously thinks the results will change, the official said. He went golfing this weekend. It's not like... For the record, this is not good journalism. And the reason why this isn't good journalism is because this allows Republicans, like, plausible deniability. Um, this anonymity allows them to be free of fucking consequences, to be like, well, I was the anonymous guy, or I was the anonymous guy. Well, I didn't say anything, you know, on purpose. It's like, if you are in favor of the truth, you have to fucking unmask the people who are legitimately saying this stuff so you can separate them from the people who are not saying anything, forcing them to say something about it. Okay? It's absolutely ridiculous that, like, we're playing this fucking, you know, dog and pony show, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, making it seem as though, like, you know, there are some reasonable Republicans out there. By the way, the reasonable ones are the ones who are humoring Trump and not, like, you know, going out, out to, like, going all out and, like, fucking openly admitting reality. It's bullshit like he's plotting how to prevent Joe Biden from taking power on January 20th. He's tweeting about filing some lawsuits. Those lawsuits will fail. Then he'll tweet some more about how the election was stolen, and then he'll leave. Republicans have been so off in their estimates about how far Trump will take things. And when he crosses one red line after another, their responses usually range from standing idly by to cheerleading. Take Susan Collins, for example. Days after she voted against impeaching the president for pressuring the Ukrainian president to dig up dirt on his political rival, Joe Biden. I believe that the president has learned from this case. The president. Shut the fuck up, dude. Oh, God, I hate these people so much. Like, no, he, of course he didn't learn his fucking lesson. There is no lesson to be learned. The president has been impeached. That's a pretty big lesson. He was impeached, and there has been criticism by both Republican and Democratic senators of his call. I believe that he will be much more cautious in the future. Oh, he learned a lesson, all right. She said he learned a lesson, but it wasn't the lesson that Collins thought he would. The president learned that there are no boundaries. He can do whatever he wants without consequence or scorn from his party, with maybe the exception of Mitt Romney or former Republican officials, usually ones who see their political career only in their rearview mirror. It's a year later, and again, he's caught on tape during a phone call pressuring officials to do his political bidding, this time asking them to break the law and throw the election in Georgia for him. Mick Mulvaney is on the list of Republicans whose quotes will live in infamy. Trump's former chief of staff wrote this on November 7th, quote, I've been asked the same question at least 100 times in the past week. If the president... This, uh, this article was literally titled, President Donald Trump will leave office gracefully. Loses will just remember that this article was allowed to be put up on Wall Street Journal opinion because <clears throat> as long as it's an opinion, you could just lie. <laughs> like, you could literally say it's just an opinion. The article's title was President Donald Trump will leave the White House gracefully. Will he participate will in exit a peaceful gracefully. transition of power? He goes on. I'm happy to answer, yes, I have every expectation that Mr. Trump will be 
act and speak like a great president should win or lose. Now, Mulvaney declined our invitation to come on the show today, but clearly his wishful thinking about the president behaving in the interest of the country falls on Trump's deaf ears about as much as it did when Mulvaney was his chief of staff. As Republicans keep catering to the president's ego, they seem to be the farthest, uh, farthest thing from the president's mind. Judging by Trump's phone call with Georgia election officials, where he talked about the runoff elections there tomorrow that will determine the balance of power in the Senate. And because of what you've done to the president, a lot of people are... Okay, Loki, it would be pretty fucking sick. Biden on Austin and Warnock picking up the gift Trump wrapped for him. The election will put an end to a block in Washington on that 2000 stimulus deck. If you send Purdue and Loeffler back to Washington, those checks won't get there. I wish you did that before, but good. And a lot of Republicans... I'm glad that, I'm glad that Joe Biden is finally doing that. You know, once the, once the pressure is off, but... And once, you know, Kamala Harris technically voted against it. Or at least, like, voted to advance the NDAA, but whatever. Negative, because they hate what you did to the president. Okay? They hate him. On Wednesday, 13 Republican senators say they will challenge Biden's win, and many of them have ambitions for a White House run in 2024, like Josh Hawley, the ringleader of this caucus that is treading all over the state's rights that Republicans usually hold so dear. Here he is a year ago. The consequences to the Republic of overturning a Democratic election because you don't like the result and because you believe that that election was somehow corrupted, uh, when in fact the, the evidence shows that it was not. I'm talking about how election. Dude, this guy is such a shark, dude. I mean, he. <clears throat> populism, left wing economic populism, even if it's fake, gets you so far because, like, look at, look at, Josh Hawley, he has the personality of a, uh, of a wet napkin, okay? He's literally like an old dish rag or a tablecloth that has been appropriated to become a dish rag once it's lost his utility. And like all he has done, even, despite the fact that he is like a Pete Buttigieg of the right, all he's been able to do is like lightly and gently push and agitate on some left-wing and left-wing adjacent economic populism and boom he's seen as like a legitimate threat elections can't be trusted that's an interesting approach i think it's crazy frankly well holly's posse also includes senator ted cruz you'll recall that president trump called cruz's wife ugly and falsely said that cruz's father was involved in jfk's assassination you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. But Cruz is set to undermine democracy for one man's ego and... Oh, that's so good. Oh, no, no, no. Big words from Theodore Rafael Cruz, baby. The support of his base in what will become his most infamous stunt on the Senate floor since reciting Dr. Seuss. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Now, there are some Republicans who are opposing this move to block the Electoral College count, either on principle or as political calculation. Senators Tom Cotton of Arkansas, Mitt Romney of Utah, Rob Portman of Ohio, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, and yes, Susan Collins of Maine. If you listen to Vice President Pence yesterday read the oath that new senators take, it is worth noting the president is leaving in 16 days. Republicans like Cruz are not. You solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You bear true faith and allegiance to the same. You take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that you well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you're about to enter. So help you God. Said seemingly without irony, as his running mate, President Trump, takes aim at the Constitution from the Oval Office, aided by some of the very senators that Pence swore in. I want to talk now with Dan Abash. She is, of course, our CNN chief political... Hey, Cruz, no Ted in his name. His name is Raphael Edward. Wait, I thought his name was Theodore Raphael uh, uh, Cruz correspondent and you know up until now dana 
We've seen the, the Republican Party largely humoring the president in mm -hmm. his quest to overturn the election. Fair to say that he's taken it, I think, farther than a lot of them thought he would, but they also didn't put lines down. I wonder if this call with Georgia election officials changes anything about what is going to happen on Wednesday. I, I was just talking to a, a Senate Republican source who said very flatly that the call doesn't change anything, uh, that the people on the side of- They're such pussies, dude. Like, how do they get away with, like, not just openly be like, this sucks? Like, there is no, there is no halfway there and like, oh, yeah, we should just humor him until he shows the fuck up. I say that because I'm a Twitch streamer on the internet. You don't get to say that when you're a member of Congress, dude. Like, you're an elected representative. You can't just be like, yeah, let's just humor him. He'll go away. I say that. Because I'm powerless. You are supposed to have power. You're supposed to exert your authority. Raffensperger is picking a fight with Purdue on Fox News today. Oh my God. The president. That? And frankly, people who uh, are, are uncomfortable with the president, uh, it, it, they're not swayed by it because. You know, a lot of people have heard this in private. If you are an elected Republican, especially somebody with a line to the president, this is the kind of thing he says. It's totally different when he's actually talking to the election official and pressuring uh, him, begging him, threatening him uh, in a way that is, you know, totally inappropriate, possibly, uh, probably illegal. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to the politics of this and, and more importantly, what's going to happen on Wednesday, unlikely it's going to change anything. But what we do know and what uh, we have seen really over the weekend, even more so because of the moves from Ted Cruz, as you just uh, pointed out, and, and Josh Hawley, is a real rift uh, within the Republican Party, more than we have seen in quite some time. And it's not something that is going to be healed anytime soon because it's a rift that goes to the fundamentals of what they stand for or don't stand for and how craven uh, people are willing to be uh, to put politics ahead of the basics when it comes to their constitutional obligations. I mean, you can hear that in what Senator Hawley said a year ago mm -hmm. and what he is saying now. He's clearly, I mean, just listening to what he said, he's violating his own principles. And we know mm -hmm. that uh, when we look at what some of these Republicans are doing, there are people, as you mentioned, this rift. There's Tom Cotton, uh, mm -hmm. one of the folks. What principles? who is not going to support this contesting of the Electoral College count. He's one of the president's staunchest defenders. He's a likely 2024 presidential candidate, mm -hmm. and he's being attacked now by the president for not joining his... Let's stop at the hour, every hour, six second on break. That's my principle. Ladies and gentlemen, it's top of the hour, every hour. It's time for a 60 second ad break right now. If you no longer want to see the ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do it for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Raise a pint. Use your Twitch Prime for free on your favorite news broadcasting channel. Here it is. Here's the ad. Oh colleagues but what is his you know what is his calculation here we can certainly see the political calculation for some folks is that has he just come to a different conclusion on what is good politics is this a matter of principle what is it listen i mean for tom cotton a uh, a republican a young republican from arkansas somebody whose base is donald trump's pay, base full stop uh, coming out and saying what the president is doing and what his colleagues are going to do by trying to by objecting and saying that they're going to start a commission that's bad politics for tom cotton tom cotton i, I will say yeah and that's why he's going to lose whereas uh you know josh hawley might have a better chance of winning now um even in talking to some of his colleagues uh, he's being intellectually honest here he is a very very smart guy not to say uh, Ted Cruz is not a smart guy, not to say Josh Hawley is a smart guy. I mean, these are all Ivy, Ivy League educated lawyers before. Yeah, remember, these salt of the earth motherfuckers like Dan Crenshaw, like, look, you might shit on me, you might say like I have an affluent background or whatever. Bitch, I went to a state school, okay? 
I literally graduated from fucking Rutgers, dog. Okay? A New Jersey State School. All these motherfuckers have MBAs and, and law degrees from Harvard trying to tell you that they're salt of the earth and like they're the real Americans. Like, didn't didn't fucking Holly literally go to Stanford, dude? I'm infinitely closer to the motherfucking proletarian. The average fucking worker th in, in terms of like your education and whatnot. than these motherfuckers are, okay? Shit is bullshit, dude. Like, imagine going to fucking Stanford and like literally working for like Bain Capital and shit and then turning around and being like, oh my God, like I'm actually, I'm actually from Missouri. I, I represent Missouri. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck you, dude. Or they came to, to the United States Senate. Uh, and but but what Tom Cotton is doing is he is, you know, putting the Constitution before uh, before his party. There's no way that saying what he's saying is going to be benefit him in the short term politically. Uh, but someone like him and frankly, even Lindsey Graham, I mean, he tweeted out that what Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, but particularly Ted Cruz is um, saying that he wants with this commission that would last 10 days, basing it on what happened in 1876. Uh, he said that is ridiculous, that things have already gone through the courts, uh, judges, all up and down from state to federal to the Supreme Court have said, we don't see any evidence. And, you know, it's hard to imagine somebody who is closer than Lindsey Graham to uh, to President Trump and the fact that he is standing up and saying. Myth kick me from the rust team. I understand. I get it. I'm not mad. People need to, he needs to have people defend the, the squad uh, or defend the, the uh, base. And I'm not there. I can't do it. This is a bad idea. Object, fine. That is your right. But it is not your right to, to bring this whole process to a screeching halt. It is quite noteworthy. And it really does, again, speak to the real rift uh, within the Republican Party about this. Nothing personal, kid. It doesn't matter that he kicked me from the team. I still have a bed. And building permissions on the base. Which means that I can literally um, wake up on the base and continue to battle. So that, that doesn't change anything. I would rather, I'd rather have him. Yeah. Server's going to get wiped as well anyway. And I'd rather have him fucking invite people to the, I'd rather have him invite people to the squad to save the, the base. So that, uh, so that they can literally save the fucking base. Then anything else currently. Oh. Three months of watching this dude make fun of Republicans at Rage Quick Games. Can't wait for the next three. Yep. Talk about politics or play Rust. Stop talking about Rust. Here. Here's a day off for you, okay? Maybe you need to cool off a little bit. See, normally I would ban that person, but because I have a... Uh, because I am a reformed person after one day of not... Except uh, after one day of not, uh, you know, streaming, uh, that goes from a permanent to just a one day off, especially because like, I am still doing politics while there is something I want to do more than politics, which is play rust with my friends as uh, you know, a big poggers moment is occurring, but I'm still doing politics because I care about this and I, I like covering the news and I think it's important that I still do that. And you're still complaining about it. Like, you don't even want to hear the mention of Rust. At least the gaming frogs don't fucking cry about reducing that complaints percentage on your not your average African stats. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. Um, it, it, especially considering the fact that 
you know, gaming uh, frogs come in here and they say, hey, they're raiding your base, but they don't say, dude, stop with this politics shit immediately. Uh, you know, don't even, you're talking about politics while, you know, your base is being raided. They just say, like, your base is being raided. Go get in there. Okay. If you listen to that tape, you'll believe that President Trump's big focus is not tomorrow. It's actually Wednesday, January 6th. Well, I mean, that may be uh, what his focus is, and we're going to learn more when we see him at the rally this evening. But I, I just want to ask you once again to respond specifically to Senator Perdue, who said that he thought it was inappropriate and disgusting to release this audio. What, how do you respond to him on that charge? Uh, Senator Perdue still owes my wife an apology for all the death threats she got after he asked for my resignation. And I've not heard one peep from that man since. And he wants to call me face-to-face, man-to-man. I'll talk to him off the record. But he hasn't done that. So oh, do you think, you know, it feels like this is very much about a grudge and uh, between you and the president and between really, you and Mr. Really Perdue? About getting uh Fox News. This is very much about a grudge. No, bitch. You know what this is about? A fucking senator literally shitting on another Republican secretary of state and lying about how he didn't cook the books enough for him to win. Or not even him, for the president to win. What the fuck you mean? Oh, this seems like a personal grudge. You're like, no, his wife is getting death threats. It's not just like a personal grudge. This isn't some fucking Rust server drama between like XQC and like Whoever the fuck XQC's uh, uncontrollable fans are like going into uh, to, to shit on, okay? This is also literally about American democracy. Like, what the fuck? This motherfucker is acting like this is some LSF commentator uh, under like Russ metagaming or like, uh, you know, uh, stream sniping uh, drama. It is completely psychotic. Uh, I don't get it. It seems like there's a, a, a personal vendetta or a personal grudge between you two. It's like, what are you saying, dude? Uh, that, for, Martha, that it's really that, about getting the You could have come up with a million better examples, Law. Yo, I swear to God, I'm just going to fucking become a permanent full-time gaming Andy. Like, I, I can't stand the fucking politics frogs, dude. Like, even, even using, like, a gaming comparison it's like not good like do not mention gaming i come here because i want to forget that gaming exists in the world you aren't good at games though you literally don't have to be good at games the facts but out because we just did a press release today we did president trump yep. probably had eight to ten points every one of his numbers were wrong and we have a, a poster board of all the different numbers the actual numbers the real numbers that we have versus what they have and our numbers will be supported in the court of law their numbers will not be oh anyway Why do people feel so entitled that they try to dictate what you do? You're the streamer. Normally, dude. Oh my God. Seriously though. Taking one day off is, is uh, truly incredible. And the reason why taking one day off has been truly incredible is because like, oh my God, your heart rate. Let me massage you, buddy. Wait, what? My heart rate is like super low. It's a lot lower than it w what it was a couple days ago. <clears throat> anyway. My, um, <laughs> let me massage you. I, yeah, taking one day off is great because right now I'd be raging and I feel fucking great. <laughs> like, I would be getting hella overwhelmed right now. Fraud you should tolerate in an American election is zero. My name is Mattis Gawthorne. My first act as a member of Congress will be to object to the Electoral College certification of the 2020 election. I want to explain to you why I'm objecting. Because the future of our very nation depends on it. Let's establish two irrefutable facts. First, 
your vote is sacred in America. A free as long as you're fucking white, dude. <laughs> Too mean, dude. Yo, I can't believe this fucking groiper is like literally. Oh my god, I can't believe we have a fucking straight up groiper in Congress, dude. Like, oh, dude. Oh, dude, your vote is fucking important, dude. Like, dude, I promise, dude. Fair and legal election. Ableism incoming? I'm not gonna make fun of him for being uh, in a wheelchair, dude. Are you fucking crazy? It's our birth. That's like literally what... That is a golden ticket for every Republican on the planet. Aside from the fact that I have like a, a moral problem with doing that, okay? Like, I, I personally think that's like disgusting to just be like oh lol like you, you know oh uh, you have uh you you have to wheel around or something like that i think that's fucked up that's actually fucked up to like all of the people who are uh disabled and the only reason why i don't have an issue with like uh what i said about dan crenshaw was because i you know it's like i never really considered it to be in the sim in the same uh wheelhouse but i think that um, overall, I think that Madison Cawthorn is like a memer, you know what I mean? Okay, stop. I'm reading the chat. You have to stop. I, I, I read chat and you feed me words that I'm saying. I can't, uh, you, you're going to make me turn off chat right now. Anyway, regardless... Okay, I have to stop. I can't. Yeah, I can't look at the chat. The point is, it is ridiculous that this person is in Congress. He's like 26 years old, and and one of the first things he's ever doing is like contesting the election. Birthright as Americans. Second, voter fraud is common in America. Yeah, Republicans do it. Those who are telling you otherwise are lying. Here is a list of thousands. Yes, thousands of recent... In Bro, this is hilarious. This... He's unironically doing. My favorite thing is when Republicans literally fucking present the evidence, and the evidence itself literally shows the opposite, okay, of what they're saying. Rampant voter fraud is. If you believe that there's rampant evidence of voter fraud, like voter fraud is happening all the time and it's crazy and we need to put a stop to it, you can't turn around and be like, here is the Heritage Foundation uh, voter fraud database that shows 1,200 times. People have been caught 1,200 times over the course of, like, billions of votes being cast. Over the course of three decades. Like, that's fucking insane, dude. It literally shows the opposite of what you're trying to say. The evidence itself that you are presenting shows the opposite of the, of the statement that you're trying to make. But, a lot of, for a lot of Republicans, like... I mean, it's voter fraud in Alabama. For a lot of Republicans, all you need is to say voter fraud exists and here is a number. Because they will never think about the additional, like, 1,200 votes from one election for, like, the fucking comp troller in an Alabama district would be rampant voter fraud that can swing the outcome. 1,200 votes... In a general election, is not enough to fucking swing the outcome, okay? Last time, 1,200 votes actually swung the outcome, or a little bit more than that swung the outcome, was when the Republicans stole the election in the state of Florida. Okay? Instances of election fraud that has led to criminal convictions and even the overturning of election results. That's bullshit. He's just making that up. Okay, I'm going to bring the chat back. Please don't do this. Please don't do like ableist jokes or whatever. And then like I end up reading it and then, and then I get fucking owned because you know, be good. In our country, you deserve to know when the sanctity of your vote has been violated. Put simply, the 2020 election violated our constitution. Article two, section one, clause two of our constitution declares clearly that state legislatures are solely responsible for determining presidential electors. This means state elections- You were literally fat shaming the Trump supporter? Yeah. 
because I think fat shaming is a different level than fucking making uh, uh, fun of someone's disability. Not all disabilities are equal. I think that some ableism is like literally a part of our regular language. Fat shaming, on the other hand, is you're just an asshole and it's unhelpful and it actually has the opposite effect of like being helpful. But overall, is nowhere near the same as like ableism. What are you fucking brain dead, dude? Which is technically ableist. I am being ableist when I say you're fucking brain dead. ...laws must be followed to have a fair presidential election. So the question on the legality of the 2020 election becomes simple. Were state laws followed? No. No, they were not. In Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia... They allowed entire Democratic, strong, Democratic strongholds to vote. Dare I say they let blacks vote. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this might shock you, but in the state of Pennsylvania, they allowed black people to register and vote. This is against the law. Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, and Wisconsin. Election laws were either broken or ignored completely. Here is a basic overview of election violations. In Pennsylvania, mail-in ballots were cast and counted in clear violation of state law. Little or no signature verification, allowing defective ballots, voting days and days after the election, poll watchers banned from polling locations, and tabulation rooms. In Arizona... Okay, but wait, what? Dog, none of those worked in the court of law. Like, everyone got thrown... All of that got thrown out fucking ASAP. Like, election officials failed... Like, you can say that you wanted to sue... You can say that you made an argument to uh, uh, sue the state or whatever the fuck. One of my neighbors just might have died. Okay. You can say all this stuff, right? You can say that, like, uh, you can, I don't know, there's a very loud noise. You can say that, uh, you know, election laws were not followed, blah, 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 all this shit. But ultimately, if you take it to the court of law and in the court of law, it doesn't work out for you. Like, it's over. It's GG's. GG's no re, boys. Uh, that's what it works. That's how it works. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Um, GG's no re. GG no re. You can't, you can put that in a video. You can put that in a campaign video. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. Hassan just lost his radical neighbor. No, my na radical neighbor is fine. Uh, what are your thoughts on this guy's jacket button? I can't focus on anything else. I mean, he, it's... Failed to follow signature comparison requirements and excluded election observers in flagrant violation of state law. In Georgia, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger unilaterally rescinded Georgia's statute requiring a detailed signature verification of each absentee ballot without legislative approval. Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, without legislative approval, unilaterally rescinded two Michigan statutes related to absentee ballot applications and signature verification. Her office sent unsolicited absentee voter ballot applications by mail to 7.7 .7 million registered Michigan voters prior to the elections. Later, they arbitrarily allowed absentee ballots to be acquired online without signature verification. And then in But it's a ballot, dude. Like it's not the same. Getting a ballot is not the fucking same as like voting. Like why is he against people getting receiving ballots without a signature? Like ah! There are states where every single person com gets compulsory ballots. Like, there are entire, there are states where every single person gets a ballot, okay? Universal mail-in ballot registration. Why are you mad at that? That's not communism. That's just, like, allowing more people to vote. In Minnesota, Secretary of State Steve Simon, a Democrat... And, and by the way, like, these same exact things that he's referencing happen in red states as well. They happen in states that Trump won as well. They also happened in states like Georgia, where the down ballot races were unclear. It wasn't like Republicans fucking, uh, I mean, Democrats swept everything. So like, why are we not talking about that? 
it's so funny that like my arguments without all of the uh the 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 many lawsuits that the trump campaign uh launched are they're the same the counter arguments to everything that these freaks are fucking throwing out there is still the same why are why are we not talking about like how this occurred in republican states as well that's kind of weird why are we not talking about the fact that like uh if they if there was a fraudulent if there was some sort of like fraudulent uh, behavior then why didn't it also happen in the down ballot races for the, the the senate like why and why didn't it come across why didn't it show up in recounts I can't find the link on my phone right now, but this guy's actually capable of walking. In all likelihood, the clinic he used posted an article years about his progress pics with him doing assisted walking. Jesus Christ. Please don't play Rust today. Okay. Democrat passed a consent decree suspending a requirement under Minnesota law that absentee ballots be signed by a witness with a Minnesota address. The state legislature in Minnesota. Um, having a wheelchair doesn't mean that you can't walk at all. It's actually uh, kind of fucked up. If, if you didn't know this, um, uh, like disability advocates will tell you it's like very triggering and very fucked up to assume that someone is faking their disability. Um, and it's a common occurrence. So uh, be more mindful of that. Because like, while I do say smooth brain and, and you know, uh, different variations of the R word because the R word is unacceptable, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't stop me from, you know, not uh, further uh, going into ableism. Um, anyway, I, that might be the case though. He might be able to walk assisted uh, and, and all that. I'm just letting you know. I, I'm not saying that you were being ableist, but it is definitely not. Uh, uh, it's something that people uh, frown upon. But it created the witness requirement to protect the integrity of absentee voting. A single official has no right to rescind it. Over in Nevada's Clark County, there were clear violations of signature verification and election observer requirements for mail-in ballots. On top of that, they allowed dead and out-of-state voters to flood the Nevada electoral system this year. Wisconsin decided to put out drop boxes, literally just a box on the side of the road for absentee ballots. A slap in the face to their own law that states that any ballot not mailed or delivered may not be counted in election results. Ballots were shoved into duffel bags and left in parks and over in gas stations. This is a gross and flagrant violation of the security and sanctity of our election process. Guess who else decided to change their state laws and allow unconstitutional vote drop boxes? Georgia. These violations became even more egregious when you consider that millions of Americans voted in 2020 using mail-in ballots. There is bipartisan agreement from experts that mail-in ballots are wildly susceptible to fraud. Fraud using mail-in balloting has led to criminal convictions in dozens of states in recent elections. Fact check that. Sorry guys, mail-in voting is not secure. These flagrant violations of state law mixed with the massive late night mail-in ballot drops in key swing states, the corrupted election technology, illegal counting practices, dead voters, and mathematically impossible vote irregularities leads me to question the sanctity of our election results. I believe if the it's just like literal gish galloping, okay? He did like, he, he made a compilation. I love that like, in order to be a successful Republican, you just have to do like what I've done uh, for the past like couple of years at the Young Turks is like make sexy ass fucking videos in front of a white psych where you just like throw out information and, uh, uh, you know, hope that it sticks. In my circumstance, I researched my stuff and it wasn't fake news, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, the same election that he's objecting is the one is the election that he won, isn't it? Well, no, actually, no, he didn't win the, he, the, it was like, it wasn't this election where he won, was it? 
I don't know. Time is a fucking uh, time is is just operating on a different. It was. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. That makes it even better, dude. Holy shit. Have you seen Javad Zarif's tweet about Iraqi intelligence? No. Simple people who use wheelchairs when they need are ambulatory wheelchair users. White people happy. Bazı Junior Kayyum Rektör atan da Hasan Ağamıza koydular. Bilmiyorum Kayyum Rektör ne demek? These states had followed their own laws. The election results would be markedly different. Remember, in recent American elections, there have been thousands of criminal convictions for election fraud. You are insane if you think this election had none. Again, the Constitution clearly... <laughs> dude, what the fuck is this, dude? Yo, that's funny as fuck. Again, the Constitution clearly dictates. Look, look, I got the Constitution in my hands, dude. States. Yo, motherfucker pulls out the Constitution. Yo, when a homie pulls out the Constitution, what do you do? What do you do, bro? That's state legislatures, not state courts, not governors, not the media, and most certainly not Facebook or Twitter are expressly given the power to determine electors for the president of the United States. Congress can and should eject the state's electors when elections are not held in accordance with state law or when election results are corrupted. I plan on doing just that. At this time, I am planning on objecting to the electors from Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. I will not countenance a motion to select electors on behalf of one candidate unless and until we are certain that the presidential election was carried out with integrity and that the results are devoid of fraud. Our sacred obligation under the Constitution demands no less. Every elected official who cares about the future of our nation should join me. The sanctity of our- Okay, we're done. We're done here. Uh, this is the last thing I'm going to look at before- Oops. This is the last thing I'm gonna look at before I move on to other stuff, AKA Rust, okay? Cause uh, you know, there's a lot going on there. This is Colorado's very own Lauren Bobert, okay? Bobert, oh Bobert. Now this morning I woke up, okay? I wake up and I get my cake up. And while I'm getting my cake up, what do I see? I see one of the fucking most insane ads I've ever seen in all my years of covering uh, American politics. Now, now this is a new, new, okay? This is a new, like, uh, a parody, new level of parody, okay? New character unlocked, new character dropped, okay, for the Republican Party. My God, dude, this is good. This is good. I mean, this is... Part of the reason why it's very difficult for comedians to be funny is because you can never be as funny as, uh, as this person is authentically. Let's take a look at what Colorado's very own Lauren Boebert is going to do in Congress. I'm Lauren Boebert, and I approve this message. Cut. That's a wrap. Why does she have a, an unloaded Glock? Like, standing on the table in front of her, in front of the green screen. Like, what is she, ready to get fucking home invasioned? While she's doing a green screen shoot? Are you going to kill the fucking cameraman? What are you, like, a part of ISIS? Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a newly elected congresswoman from... This is the funniest part about this entire video, okay? Like, while this psycho is, like, uh, power walking in her fucking six-inch heels uh, through streets of... Uh, you know, Georgetown. Like, one of the wealthiest neighborhoods, by the way. Like, like this, this psycho uh, business, small business owner uh, is not living in, like, a bad part of D.C. or anything. This is fucking bullshit, okay? Yeah, she's kind of nice with it, though. The gum makes it even hotter. Ew, dude, she's not kind of nice with it at all. She's a fucking psycho. Damn, I thought everyone made fun of me for liking basic white ladies, and, and it turns out, no, it's the entire chat. 
This is Capitol Hill. That's right next to Capitol. Not Georgetown. Okay, shut the fuck up, H. Bizzle. Don't correct me. Okay, all right, whatever. It's Capitol Hill. Colorado. Even though I now work in one of the most liberal cities in America, I refuse to give up my rights, especially my Second Amendment rights. <laughs> I will carry my firearm in D.C. and in Congress. Come on, dude! That's why I will carry my Glock to Congress. Like, this is so good, dude. This is so awesome. I mean, this is it. This is fan service. This is virtue signaling. This is literally a uh, Republican id Paul. Okay. Like, imagine you're, you're a representative of Colorado. Okay. And like, your people are dying. Okay. Businesses are out. Like, there's so much uh, economic turmoil. So much uncertainty. And like, your entire goal is like, yeah, I'm going to go to Capitol Hill and I'm going to bring my Glock with me. Sick. Like, that's great. Good job, dude. Who are you helping with this? Can you e explain what's going on here? <laughs> like, who is this supposed to help? Like, wh what are you doing here? And if you think that this is sick, like, you're such a fucking idiotic hog. Okay? Also, what happens? Like, did, did she do a desk pop? Is she going to be one of those, like, uh, you know, grieving, uh, grieving recently fired uh, employees? Or is, he, is she going to go postal? Huh? Also, Glock is a brand, technically, isn't it? I'm not even saying I'm going to bring my pistol to Congress. Because it's a specific type of gun. Ironically, one that does not have a safety. So, wrong people to ask. You know how many fucking gun nuts are in my audience, dude? Are you crazy? Every time we talk about guns, they get so mad. Ironically, not made in the USA. Yeah. Well, ironically, also one that doesn't have a safety, so... Shooters, her restaurant is nuts. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. In D.C. and in Congress, this caused outrage from Democrats and the media. Why? It's our job in Congress to defend your rights, including your Second Amendment. Dude, listen. Motherfucker, you're getting, you're getting winded walking on a fucking treadmill in a green screen. Okay? Like, what is this? What, what are you doing? You're literally out of breath, power walking on a goddamn treadmill indoors to a fucking porn soundtrack talking about how you're going to bring your gun into Congress. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. She's going to fucking fall. She's going to trip and fall. First of all, this is literally just putting a bullseye on yourself. You're like, I walk to Congress every day and here is where I keep my gun. And that's exactly what I'm here to do. Like, look at this, look. In DC, of all places, we should be encouraged to practice our rights. So forget what you hear in the fake news. By the way, you might've missed this part. It says, we the people in the clouds. So forget what you hear in the fake news. Here are the real reasons why I choose to defend myself in our nation's capital. I'm a woman and a mother of four. I choose to defend my family with all of the force the constitution provides. DC is one of the top 10 most dangerous cities in our country. Okay, again, like, she went, I feel like she went to a, a, an area to like make it look bad, but this is not like a bad neighborhood. Homicide rates and violent crimes are skyrocketing. Like this is a neighborhood with uh, back alleys that literally have garages, like one car, two car garages. Clearly this is not a fucking murderous uh, alleyway in, in a bad part of DC. Like, it might look that way if you're from fucking Colorado and every house has like a gigantic yard or some shit. Being here, being a member of Congress is pretty basic. 
I don't go to work in a motorcade or armored car. I don't get police escorts everywhere I go. I walk to my office every morning by myself. So as a five foot tall, 100 pound woman, I choose to protect myself legally. Bro, I swear to God, this is literally how you, this is literally how people get, this is literally how people acquire guns illegally, okay? You want to know how fucking criminals get guns? This motherfucker, not even a joke. I am a hundred pound, five foot.